In this tutorial, we'll be learning about the Pixplant interface functionality. We'll be using a Pixplant project created from an original brick photo from uh, benclower.com. And let's load the Pixplant project. We have it in our recent projects list. And um, so Pixplant includes uh, two main areas, the 3D maps uh, area, which is this one we're currently seeing and the texture area. You can uh, learn more about these two areas in the nearby Pixplan tutorials. And uh, let's take a look at the texture area um, and let's see uh, the help functionality included in Pixplan. Um, first of all, um, all the editors uh, and viewers include at their bottom left corner this button, which when uh, pressed uh, shows um, information about the functionality of that uh, that part of the interface. Uh, likewise, also here in the, um, the seed uh, viewer. And um, besides this uh, functionality, um, the interface elements also have uh, tooltip functionality. For instance, um, if I leave the cursor. Um, above this button I, I, I get uh, the normal tooltip. Um, likewise for labels and for other uh, interface elements. Um, we also have uh, help documentation. Uh, in this case is, is uh, in the help uh, menu. In uh, OSX is available in the usual place for help. And um, the Pixplant uh, help documentation is split in three parts, an introduction, uh, help about the texture area, and help uh, for the 3D maps area. Um, there is an important uh, thing um, you should know about labels. Um, labels are active in the sense that when clicked they set the respective control to um, a default uh, value. For instance, um, I'm changing the medium equalization level and if I click its label it returns to the default position of zero. Uh, for other uh, cases, for other controls that uh, might have an ambiguous default um, the Pixplant user interface includes uh, these uh, links, which can, um, when, when pressed, also set um, appropriate values. For instance, in this case, uh, it, uh, it reset, it, they, the, the values are now reset to, to zero. Um, the same for other uh, types of controls, for instance, in displacement range, um, there is this expand to maximum and so on. An important um, part of the of the interface is the docking and undocking of uh, of areas in the in the three D maps. Um, in all the places where this um, button appears, um, that area of the interface can be undocked into an independent window. Um, in this case, the three D preview is now uh, a window which can be placed anywhere on the screen and um, this is very helpful for uh, editing um, side by side um, for editing maps side by side um, we can um, dock again by closing the window and it will dock to its uh, original place the same um, also happens for um, 3D map editors. In this case, uh, displacement is now an independent window and normal is now another independent window. This is, uh, this is very important to, to edit the same material, uh, to edit its features side by side. Um, you can notice that there is a blue line at the top of, of the window. Um, this marks the current uh, active window. For instance, if I now select normal, it has now changed into the normal window. Likewise for the main window and for the texture area also. 
Um, another very important uh, functionality is the view sync. Um, you can see that uh, all the 3D map editors have a checkbox at the bottom. And uh, if this box is uh, checked, this means that um, all such views, all such editors, have their views synchronized. So if I, for instance, um, pan and zoom so that I see a particular part of the interface, then all the other windows will also display uh, a similar view. This is um, very, very important if you are editing a uh, certain part of a material, then uh, with this you can have the the, uh, the different 3D map editors um, undocked into independent windows and available on screen for um, for editing. Um, okay, uh, in the same way, if you remove the view sync, then you can edit this view without um, influencing the the other ones. Okay. Okay, so I'll now undock these two windows. Okay. And um, we'll now uh, be looking at uh, an another um, interesting functionality, functionality, which is the um, external edit uh, button. All the editors, as well as the texture area, include this button uh, which can edit the respective map in an uh, external application um, which uh, after being edited there uh, after being saved is brought back here with the changes um, applied so I've configured Photoshop to be my external editor and I'm now going to click and Photoshop appears, or the, the image, the map appears in Photoshop. And um, I'll now add some marks here. Mark, and the, I'll then close and uh, say yes to save. And uh, the, my, my changes have now been, uh, been uh, brought uh, back into Pixplant. And um, of course, I can use the uh, normal pixplan tools to, to also uh, paint in, uh, in pixplan. Let's now see the pixplan preferences. Um, the pixplan preferences include uh, um, a skin uh, settings for, for changing skins. Um, Pixplan ships with the uh, two uh, color themes, the medium, which is the one you are seeing, and a darker one, a dark um, skin, uh, which is this one. And um, the highlight color can also be changed from blue. So this highlight color, which is used to mark the active editor and as well as used in, uh, in uh, labels for the active editor, also here. And you can change it to, to orange. And um, okay, um, and so we've seen the most important functionality of the Pixplant user interface. Thanks for watching. For more Pixplant information or to download the demo for Windows or Mac OS X, please visit pixplant.com.